you guys are probably wondering what the f is Justin doing holding his microphone? Justin here from Tin Man Electronics guys. The reason I'm holding my microphone is because I simply broke my microphone stand. I do a little conversational podcast with my friends. It's called Inane Banter. I'll put a, a link right here. And so I go to my friend's place and I take my microphone stand out of my vehicle. It's cold. It's winter over here. It's neg 30 degrees uh, centigrade. And I get inside the house and when I open it up, it snaps in like multiple pieces. But you know what? I was actually happy that I broke my microphone stand. And you know why? It's because I get to 3D print myself a replacement piece. So today I'm going to show you guys some of the design considerations I have to take in order to replace my broken part. And if you guys fast forward to the end of this video, then you guys could see the, the 3D printing happening. And maybe if I can, I'll put a link right here to the end of the video. So this is actually the broken part, okay? Except you can see it's fixed because I put super glue on it. But why fix it with super glue if I could fix it with 3D printing? Anyways, I super glued it back together so that you guys could see what the original piece looked like. And also, I'll be able to use this as a backup in case my 3D printed one will break in the future. And it most likely will. So like I mentioned, there are a couple things that you want to take into consideration when you're designing for FDM fused deposition modeling printing, which is basically like these RepRap 3D printers. So of course, like one of the first things you got to make sure is you don't print in mid-air. So that's the first thing I got to fix and it occurs on maybe uh, two or three times here on this model. So there's a couple of different changes I had to make. So first of all is this big overhanging piece. Okay. Um, I'll get to it later, but I decided to print this piece just standing up just like that. Okay. And anyways, there's a massive overhang occurring here and this is totally impossible to be printed. So to fix that, either you use support materials, which I haven't experienced yet. Um, I'll have to test that out in the future, but I didn't want to do it because I didn't know how it works and I don't know how well it works. So I just, I just extended this whole part all the way to the bottom and I just print it all the way from the bottom, a bit nice solid piece. Hopefully it'll give it also some more integrity. Unless of course I use it the way I'm supposed to and untighten it before I torque it. And then another situation where this occurs is with this little square hole to fit the carriage bolt. So this carriage bolt gets inserted into here and the threading is, you know, it's just like a normal bolt except at the bottom it's got a square shape. So you could fit that in perfectly and it will remain in that position, right? It's not going to turn when you're tightening it from, uh, tighten it from the other side using the knob. So that's a handy little mechanically engineered feature, right? That uh, keeps it from turning. Very simple, but I can't print it. Okay. Same thing. There's an overhang with the uh, original orientation. So that's a quick fix. It's really easy. The rotation of the bolt doesn't matter. So I just rotated that by 45 degrees so that it's like a nice diamond shape that I could print easily because 45 degree angles, I could print outwards or inwards or whatever with the 3D printer, no problem. So I did that and uh, you'll see how it turns out in the 3D print at the end, okay? And the last spot where the overhang occurs is on this other lock block. So you could actually, with this microphone stand pivot joint here, you could actually adjust how far the microphone comes out from the center axes. You could see the overhang right there, okay? To fix that overhang, I just simply cut that out. But then I realized there's still a bit of an overhang on the main, the main block that, that braces the microphone boom. And so you could see I, I kind of cut that out as well in like a half circle so that I could just ease back into constructing slash printing the, the main, the main ah, axes of alignment. Yeah, you'll have to pardon my terminology because I'm no mechanical engineer, okay? Honestly, it was really easy to just put it into SolidWorks. I have, I've got a, a set of calipers, digital calipers that, that uh, converts between millimeters and inches. And it's just so easy. Like I go around everywhere, I take measurements and I basically, I recreated 
this model perfectly in SOLIDWORKS. And then from there, I tweaked it. I changed it so that I could print uh, no overhangs. Other changes also like expanding the holes a bit so that the, the carriage bolt or the tightening nuts will fit into place. And finally, actually, I think th another really, really big consideration you have to take in mind is which, which orientation are you going to print this? Ideally, I want to print it in a single piece, okay? And so I figured that printing it like this and then just extending those downward would make it nice to print in one piece. And also, you have to think about the grain. You know, which way are the layers placed? Because the, the way that the layers are placed, that's your weakest point, okay? But against it is your strongest, right? So anyways, you've got, you, I've got layers all the way up to the top, from the bottom to the top, okay? So that's good for the hole where you insert the rod for the microphone because it's not like it's just going to randomly split and then fall on the ground because it can't. It's, it's the strongest point. Um, but the problem with that is the way I broke it is by torquing it when I was trying to fold it open. And now the grain is like this. And so if it's like this, there's a weak point going right through the center. So it, it, this thing, when I print it, will definitely be prone to torquing it and breaking it almost the same way as before. But I thought it was the optimal way of printing this piece, okay? Those were the design considerations I had to deal with for this project. I'm sure there are going to be more in future projects that I will bring up as they come up. So stay tuned, guys. That's the 3D print right there. Magic! This print is 47 grams of beauty, which equates to about a dollar and 67 cents Canadian for the price of what I got the spool at. I got my spool, one kilogram spool for $35 Canadian and this thing is only 47 grams. So do the math. $1.65 Canadian. That is amazingly cheap. I thought 3D printing was so much more expensive than this. I thought this was going to cost me five to 10 bucks, but no, I'm, I'm totally wrong. But this is before I actually started 3D printing. So just take that for reference, guys. If you don't own a 3D printer, that, a piece this big, okay, is two bucks tops. And for you Imgur users out there, maybe this will help. So in total, this print took me seven and a half hours to, to actually print out fully. Okay, I could have, of course, stopped it short. I, could, I didn't have to print this top part off. And I could have stopped it there and saved myself an hour and a half. But I didn't. I just wanted to print the whole damn thing out to show you guys that it is possible. I was scared. So between the last print which is the y-axis motor from last episode and this print I changed the parameters to see if I could prevent warping but no uh, no it didn't help a heated bed would help but I didn't have it so I, I implemented that brimming and the skirting and I still have the same amount of warping if I lay it flat on the ground or not flat if I pin one side down I could see this rises up by one millimeter over a span of like two inches Oh, actually, I shouldn't say that because now I'm playing with Imperial and Metric, so that's not good. And this thing is just, just wow. Like, there are a couple of settings that I have to touch base on with you guys that I have to change in order to get even better quality. Amazing. But I had to do very little work. Like, I, I did increase a bit of the sizes in SolidWorks to make sure that all the components fit, that the bolts, the carriage bolt and uh, the tightening nut would fit. And it still wasn't enough, but that's nothing a file can't handle. I got this cheap ass uh, Dollarama file that I found somewhere in the house. Both holes were tight. The, the round one where the, the actual threading of the carriage bolt goes through was too tight. So I, I uh, filed that out and it's, it was sliding in nice. And then the square side where the carriage bolt rests and prevents ro rotation was actually tight as well so I filed that down and it was very nice now what I suggest for files is you're gonna want a rounded file and a flat file the flat file is so that you could get you know flat edges really easily and the rounded one is for when you're doing holes okay holes and fillets 
very important and just you know just a couple more uh, files oh it just it, it works so well and like the whole right off the bat this thing would slide in and out of the rod i tested it earlier because i wanted to make sure it's actually functioning before i tell you guys and preach the good news of the 3d printing but it actually works and everything and it's just ah it's ah you guys gotta get a 3d printer if you don't have a 3d printer you gotta get one like it's and if you're into technology, it's just, it's so amazing. Like you've, you've been wanting a 3d printer and you've been considering buying one. Like just don't stop waiting. Just get it because it's going to take a while to build it. Or if it's pre-assembled, it's going to take you forever to get it set up. And just like, it's, it's a learning experience and you got to start right away. You got to, you got to use it before you lose it. I just, I just love it so much. It's <laughs> oh, satisfying. So why don't I assemble this instead of yapping off here, okay? I bet that's what you guys want to see anyway. <laughs> oh my god, it, it... It's actually tightened. It's actually tightened. Like, I... I torqued this thing in. And it's it's not moving back and forth. What it's and this is only half of it. Okay, this is only half of it. There you go. That is a working microphone stand pivot by Tin Man Electronics. It actually works like <laughs> yes so actually assembling this microphone stand pivot was was no problem I just put it back together the way that this one came apart the only difference is oh no what what do you tell there is no difference it's essentially the same part okay it's working okay when it's when it's entirely loosened it's still nice and stiff when I put a microphone on it it will load it down and be uh, tighter but when I tighten that up it's snug as a bug in a rug that is that's not tight that's tight uh, yeah it's it's okay it's not it's not as tight I think but uh, I don't know I'll have to use it and see if it's actually any good so and then I could loosen that and retract it and the microphone goes at the tip here and I could just She works. She works. Now there's not that many improvements. I'm just going to name a couple. Always. Um, it's a little tight. Okay. For the, the actual rod that's going through to hold the microphone here. Uh, this is actually a little too loose. There's too much slop. You could maybe see how it's it's got a lot of play in it. And maybe I could just tighten that a tiny bit. But the rest, I could maybe open up the holes a tiny bit more and maybe the slot for um, the little nubbin that, that this thing tightens into. But apart from that, it's, it's pretty good. And actually, this piece that I added to re remove the need for support material because I've never used it before, uh, it's actually, it's in the way. So improvement, I could remove it. And maybe, you know, bite the bullet, try using support material might as well but yeah so check it out you've got the microphone stand and you could go down you could go all the way down and before you could go all the way up that's kind of blocked to you know maybe 15 degrees right there because this is actually in the way it's actually conflicting with the lower part of the this bracket so I could trim that off though that's that's no problem I'll just change the 3d model so I know it was a long video, but we saw a lot today, especially with the, the design considerations behind 3D printing and how, you know, I don't know how I put this thing together, you know, what, what I could improve on. This is what we all talked about today. If you enjoy my videos, you know, give them a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. I always love it when people subscribe and when people leave comments in the comment section. So like, I would love to hear what you like, you know, what, what kind of stuff in electronics or mechanical engineering or any kind of engineering stuff, what do you like and what would you like to see in my channel? You know, what, what stuff do you want me to 3D print and what do you want to see in future videos? You've got, you've got a say because I am just like 
a channel in the making here. So if you tell me right now, that could very well help my, me change my channel to more better conform to your needs. So right before we end this, I want to thank Laserhawk at Laserhawk Music once again for just giving me permission to use their music, the right kind of music. It's just, just the right ambiance for this electronic stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at Justin Tinman, and I've also got a website at www.tinmanelectronics.com. I don't think I've got anything else to say, except for that is engineering. <laughs>